When it comes to climate change, there are no easy answers or quick fixes. It's not as if we can push a button and suddenly stop emitting carbon into the atmosphere. But when it comes to oceans, fortunately, there are communities in the world that are beginning to find new ways to stop the destruction of our marine environment. 40 miles off the coast of Belize, on a small Caribbean island called Laughing Bird Key, the rhythms of life are defined by natural forces, like the wind and the currents. Several months each year, during the time of the full moon, something extraordinary happens. Just below the surface of the water, tens of thousands of reef fish, snapper and grouper, converge on a spot called Gladden's Spit. Their bodies are big and ripe and ready to reproduce. The mating frenzy begins when the females, in a swirling motion, suddenly release their eggs. Following behind, the males release their sperm to create an underwater snowstorm. The spawning season also attracts scientists from around the world. We swim right into the school of these things, so you're just looking around and it's just solid fish. It's just unbelievable. Fish aggregate to spawn because the physical oceanographics are such that you get convergent currents at a reef promontory which take larvae offshore and away from the reef. It can be pretty spooky being in one of these milky spawn clouds and, uh, and just looking around. You really don't know what's coming at you. What's coming at them is the largest fish on the planet. Up to 60 feet long, whale sharks come to feed on the dense cloud of eggs that the spawning fish produce. Several years ago, marine biologists discovered a problem. At the start of the spawning season, local fishermen were catching tons of fish. Before the snapper and grouper had a chance to reproduce. When the fish populations declined, the whale sharks began to leave in search of more prolific spawning sites. Everything changed when local officials created the Gladden Spit Marine Reserve. The catch is now carefully monitored and recorded. During the spawning season, fishing is limited. 14, you got the mama so far. <laughs> Within a few years, the fishery rebounded. And then the whale sharks returned. And with them came a new source of income, ecotourism. Brian Young used to be a fisherman. Now he's a tour guide. We all want to get real tight together so we can simulate the spawning. It looks like the spawning with all the bubbles going up. And that will attract the shark. They're down there with the fish, swimming around, waiting for the spawning to start. So if we simulate something like that, they come in for that. The lesson learned from the success of the Gladden Spit Marine Reserve is simple. When a fishery is saved, there are often unexpected benefits, like the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to swim with the largest fish on the planet. Incredible. Yeah, there were dolphins flying over there and a whale yeah, shark under us. It was incredible. Oh, there's one right on the surface right there, right, right behind you. Brian, do all your, your people get this excited when they sail? No oh, man. <laughs> I'm getting excited myself. Here in Belize, the protection of a fishery not only helped the people of Laughing Bird Key, it's joined Florida's Dry Tortugas Reserve as a model for marine communities around the world. <laughs>